Welcome everyone. Today, we're exploring the fascinating world of generative AI, how it works and its potential impact on education. Let's dive in. Before we talk about generative AI, let's first clarify what we mean by AI. At the broadest level, we have algorithms. Algorithms are a set of instructions which can be used to perform a specific task. You can think of a recipe to bake a cake as an algorithm. Though most commonly, we think of algorithms as the code we write to give instructions to a computer. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is a computer algorithm which can perform tasks which would normally require human intelligence to solve. However, usually when we think of AI, we're talking about machine learning. Machine learning is a specific type of AI which can change its behavior from experience or data, meaning that a human programmer doesn't have to explicitly state every step of a problem. To better understand why we might want to use machine learning, let's use the example of identifying an image as containing a cat or a dog. Pause the video for a second and think. If you had to give a computer explicit instructions that could identify if an image contains a cat or a dog, which instructions would you choose? If you thought about it, you might notice that it quickly starts to feel complicated. Most rules we can think of will also have exceptions. Maybe you thought you could identify cats from their pointy ears. But some dogs also have pointy ears. Maybe you thought you could look at the nose. But then you would need additional instructions to tell the computer what a nose even is, and then how to tell apart a cat nose from a dog nose. And we start to feel like we're right back where we started. What would it look like if we used machine learning to solve this same problem? Well, we would start off by gathering data. In this case, that would mean images of cats and images of dogs. Attached to these images would also be a label containing the correct answer. It's similar to how a human might learn by using flashcards. After collecting the data, we would start training this algorithm by giving it our images and grading the answers it gives us, much like a human on a multiple choice test. At first, our algorithm wouldn't understand the difference between cats and dogs, so it would be answering basically randomly, and it would probably get about half of them wrong. After we finished giving it our test, the algorithm would look at which answers it got correct and which it got wrong. It could then use that information to learn and gradually develop an understanding of the differences between cats and dogs. How exactly this works is beyond the scope of this video, but it uses something called an artificial neural network, which was inspired by how biological brains work. Once we've tested our machine and we've given it feedback on which answers it got right and wrong, it should now be able to correctly identify images of dogs versus images of cats. In the real world, we would need hundreds or thousands of images in order to do this, and we would have to run the test multiple times, but the overall idea is the same. We train our algorithm by using collected data, which we then use to test our algorithm, and from that test, it slowly learns to give the answers which we want. Now that we understand how AI and machine learning works, we can talk about generative AI. In the last example, the algorithm was able to identify images of cats and dogs, where we would input the image of, for example, a cat, and it would give a text output of the word cat. This means that somewhere inside, it has an understanding of what cats and dogs look like. Generative AI takes the same idea, but it flips it around. Now, we can give it the input of the word cat, and it would use its understanding of what a cat looks like to generate the image of a cat. Recently, this type of generative AI has made huge improvements, and it's getting to the point where it's better and faster than most humans at doing the same task. My artistic skill is on the level of drawing stick figures, but I was able to use the program Midjourney to generate this image of a cat in about 60 seconds. In fact, I used Midjourney to generate all of the pictures so far in this presentation. None of these cats or dogs are real. They were all artificially generated by a computer. And it's not only images that can be made by generative AI. We now have computers which can compose music. I used the program Ava to create the background music for this video that you're listening to right now. There's a lot of potential for the use of generative AI for things like scientific discovery. You could use it to generate ideas for new types of drugs to cure illness. Or you could use it for design generating ideas and models for a new car or shoe. But the area of generative AI, which is making the biggest stir right now, especially in the world of education, is text generation. Seemingly overnight, 
students were given the ability to write entire essays just by typing in the essay prompt to a generative AI like ChatGPT, skipping any need for learning or thinking about the content. A few months ago, ChatGPT felt like it was writing at the level of a mediocre grade 12 student, but it's improved to the point where now it feels like it's writing at the level of a graduate student on some topics. This ability for a computer to generate text has really surprised the world of education because of how much writing is relied on as a method for teaching and assessing student comprehension. There are also concerns about the accuracy of the information given by this technology, and it's highlighted the need for continued investment in developing students' critical thinking abilities. A positive vision of what this technology could look like is where every child has immediate access to their own personal tutor. You can see an example here of me asking Bing AI to help me understand generative AI as a 10 year old. And not only does it give me a good, approachable answer, but I'm also able to ask follow up questions to clarify and deepen my understanding. This could go a long way to making high quality education accessible to a much larger number of people worldwide. But there are dangers here too. Learning how to write well is a way of learning how to think well. Entirely outsourcing our ability to think well to a machine feels like a recipe for disaster. And by now, we're all aware of the negative impacts that misinformation can have on a society. All of this has forced educators to respond, with some choosing to outright ban all use of the technology. However, any ban is going to be very difficult to enforce in the medium to long term. Generative AI has shown itself to be extremely capable and the potential for profits are high, so everyone wants in on the action. Companies like Microsoft and Google are integrating it into their document editing and search products. Amazon is creating search infrastructure for people to create their own generative AI models, and it will likely be using it in its own search and product recommendations. Even Adobe is adding in text to image capabilities to make image creation and editing easier. Unless the plan is to block all student access to the internet, the widespread adoption of generative AI is going to make it very difficult to control and moderate student access to this technology. The toothpaste is out of the tube and there's no putting it back. It feels like we're on the verge of transitioning to a new method of interacting with computers. The transition from text-based interfaces to graphical user interfaces in the 1980s made computers easier to use and led to the widespread adoption of personal computers, as you no longer needed to have specialized programming knowledge just to interact with the technology. We should expect the transition from graphical interfaces to AI interfaces to have a similar effect. Imagine if something like Siri was actually helpful and always understood what you're trying to get it to do. Computers are notoriously difficult to get them to do what you want, and having a way of interacting with them that more closely resembles natural human language would make using them a much easier and more accessible task. This is all part of an ongoing discussion about a novel, emerging technology. Generative AI is clearly extremely powerful, and we need to ensure that this power is used wisely for the benefit of all humans. As a society, we were too lax with the introduction of social media and mobile phones, and we're now paying for this with an epidemic of misinformation and rising anxiety rates and depression. Generative AI is a technology still in its infancy, meaning we have a lot of influence over which direction it goes. That window won't stay open long, and if we don't make our voices heard, then a small number of people at large technology companies will choose the direction for us, and we may not like the results. So. If you're watching this and wondering what to do, here are some suggestions. Educate yourself about this technology. There are tons of great videos about this on YouTube, and I'll link to some of the ones that I like in the description below. I also recommend that you try out the technology yourself and decide what you think about it and how you think it should be used. In many of these applications, there's also a way for you to give your feedback to the designers and developers, and I recommend that you do that. You can also see if there are any workshops on your area about the topic, or you can just talk to your friends or coworkers and see what they think. Generative AI has great potential to both help and harm humanity. Which direction it goes is a choice that has not yet been made. There is no inevitability here, only people making choices about the future of the world that we want to live in. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. This is my first time making a video like this for the public and I really enjoyed the process. I'd like to keep making more videos like this in the future, so I'd love for people to leave any feedback you have for me in the comments below, and let me know if there are any other topics you'd like to see me make a video about. To everyone watching, remember to love yourself always, and I hope you have a wonderful day.